This is an English guide to learn Swedish. Hello and welcome back. As I mentioned in previous episodes, vowels in Swedish has two pronunciations, and hopefully you're fairly familiar with these by now and can distinguish between them. But when should you use the short vowel and when should you use the long vowel? This is what I'm going to talk about in this episode. The pronunciation of the vowel is mostly controlled by the consonants that follows directly after. If there are two of the same consonants after the vowel, then the vowel is short. And if there is only one of a particular consonant after the vowel, then the vowel is long. I remember this rule by thinking that there is an equilibrium. If we have two consonants of the same type after the vowel, then the vowel must be short to compensate for the many consonants. And likewise, if there's only one consonant of the same type, then the word is too short and we need a long vowel to compensate. Remember, this is just a trick for remembering when to use which vowel pronunciation. It's not actually a rule. This pronunciation rule is actually very important because there's a lot of words where you can pronounce the word with either long or short vowel. And in each case, the words will have different meanings. Let's look at an example. These are the two words hot and hat. The first word hot has only one T after the A, so A is pronounced as the long vowel, hot. The second word hat has two T after the A, so A is pronounced as the short vowel. Hat. The first word hot means hatred, while hat means hat. Let's take some more easy examples. Lam, lam, lila, lilla, mat, matt, syl, syl, föl. Full. And for good measure, let's take a more complicated example. Grammatik. The first A is followed by two M. So that vowel is of course short. Grammatik. Now, the second A is also short. And this is a phenomena I've stumbled over as I was writing the script for this episode. Since I haven't studied the Swedish language on a university level, I can't really give you an answer to why, but after going through a ton of words in my mind, it seems like A is short even when it follows double consonants. Uh, And to add to this, it seems to be short when ending a word, like SAMMA. So when it comes to A, a good guess is that it has the short vowel pronunciation. Anyhow, back to grammatik. The E has the long vowel pronunciation because there's only one K following the E. Alternating the numbers of consonants in this word won't create real Swedish words. To give you a sense of what happens with the pronunciation when you do so, here are some examples. Grammatik. 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 The double K spelling actually brings us to some very important exceptions in respect to spelling. Contrary to Norwegian and Danish, the Swedish language doesn't use double K. We use CK, which is regarded as the exact same thing. For example, lock. The O has the short vowel pronunciation, just as it would have if the spelling would have been lock. Another important exception in the Swedish language is the consonant combination M, N, which causes preceding vowels to take on the short vowel pronunciation. For example, in the word velkomna, 
the O has the short vowel pronunciation, even though it's only one M following it. My guess is that this is because the spelling Välkomna would be very confusing because of the amount of arcs. There are guaranteed a lot more exceptions and rules that governs the pronunciation of vowels, but my reasoning is that if I don't know of them, they aren't really necessary to know about. By practicing and listening to Swedish, the rest of the exception and special cases will come natural. In this episode we talk about how you can deduce the pronunciation of the spelling. But remember, this works very well the other way around. If you hear a word in Swedish, you can by listening to the vowels figure out the spelling. So as a practice opportunity, I'll say five words in Swedish and you can figure out the spelling. I'll give you the answers next time. Klocka Kalas Ekträd Flagga Trana In the next couple of episodes, we're going to dive into pronunciation exceptions, starting off with primary silent letters and the different pronunciations of G. Then we will talk about C and the mess that is the Swedish G sounds. See you next time. Thank you for watching.